Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday and welcome to the fourth session of the Stephen and Beyond webinar series. If you missed any of the previous sessions, you can find the recordings on the same Devon and Beyond page. And while you're there, please take a moment to review the other series and webinars that we have added for you, our esteemed audience. Yeah, these are all the series that we have over there. So please go ahead and, and check out all the new webinars that have been added. Today's session is on Oracle Cloud Financial Operations or Business Operations, where we will talk about operating workloads on OCI, tracking resources, consumption costs, budgeting, tagging, quota policies, and much more. I'm Renu Bhatt, Program Lead for the Customer Enablement Team here at Oracle. And today I'm joined by two great presenters, Olivia Ferda and Omar Kumar, both are cloud engineers here at Oracle. We also have George Whittle, who is a guest presenter with us today. And with that, please enjoy the session. Olivia, please take it forward. Thank you, Renu. Um, thanks everyone for joining our financial operations session today. So we'll be diving into some tools for helping you organize your resources, track your resources. We'll also take a look into budgets and also get more insight into your cost. So that'll be the main focus of today's session. And as Rainy mentioned earlier, we have our Day One and Beyond series. So we have our core series here, but if you wanna explore some other series like Hands-On, Cloud Native, Cloud Security, and Did You Know What's New in OCI, please feel free to explore those. All right, so diving um, into the agenda or what we'll be specifically focusing on today. So in the first half, I'll take you through compartments, so how you organize your resources, and some considerations there. And then I'll also take you through tagging, so how you track your different resources. And then from there, Uma will be taking us through the remaining portion, so budget, sorry, budget and cost analysis, and then um, Cloud Advisor and some key takeaways. And so we'll also have um, a demo at the end. All right, so going into the um, cloud responsibility model right here. So on-prem, you have full customer responsibility. So you can see the breakdown here. But as you go from IaaS or infrastructure as a service to SaaS or software as a service, you can see the further breakdown right here from the customer responsibility to the Oracle responsibility right here. And so if you're in IaaS or infrastructure as a service, this might be more like a VM running in OCI. And then you have more PaaS or platform as a service. So this is more maybe Oracle Analytics Cloud or OAC or Oracle Integration Cloud or OIC. And then you also have um, SaaS. So more like your SaaS Fusion apps right here. So you can kind of see the breakdown just depending on your security and compliance responsibilities. All right, so diving into the Oracle Cloud ecosystem right here. So you can see there's a lot of different services. Um, we have Oracle applications, custom applications, ISV applications, there's storage, networking, database, all these different services. So once again, we're gonna be focusing on how do you organize these different resources that you're working with? How do you keep track of them? How do you get more insight into your cost? So that's what we're mainly gonna be taking a look at today. Right, so to get us started, I'm gonna pass it over to George to go over a few slides. So over to you, George. Thanks, Olivia. So as you build out your environment, what are some things to keep in mind? Um, we just wanted to highlight some use cases, you know, to think about as we go through the session today. Um, so really, you know, what do we try to help customers with, you know, uh, organizing all of these various services with lots of different lines of business using the cloud? Um, you know, it can, it can become a, a lot of uh, usage out there, right? So one of the things we try to help customers do is determine the business purpose each cloud service will support. Uh, that's going to enable them to optimize costs and for long-term cloud success. And what do we mean by that, really? Um, you know, it's important to understand which your workloads are mission critical, which your workloads are maybe a little bit less critical, right? Because we want to make sure that those mission critical apps, for example, have high availability built into them, have disaster recovery built in. Um, whereas those other applications, maybe there's an application that, you know, two folks from one line of business touch very infrequently. 
you probably don't need as many, you know, as much high availability um, built into that sort of application, right? So it's important to understand what is it being used for, who's using it. Um, and then also, you know, customers, it's really important to assign cloud service costs to each project, department, or line of business. And that's going to enable cost tracking and budgeting. And ultimately, it's going to help IT teams retain their budgets for more crucial projects and initiatives that support the full business. And again, what do we mean by that? Well, if marketing has one application that you know consumes, let's just say, hundred thousand dollars a year, we want that application to be you know identified as as marketing's usage, so that that cost can be either charged back or show back to the business, and IT is not just you know, eating that um, that cost each year, right? Um, and really just, you know, investing the time to build out a strategy to maintain cloud costs. It enables customers to run more workloads more securely and within budget. Um, we're going to touch on some of these things in the, in the coming slides here as well. Um, and without governance and proper tools in place, it's impossible to manage these cloud resources and be fiscally responsible and secure the cloud environment. So it's it's important to invest the time up front with the right stakeholders um, and, and really think about who's using all these services, how are they being used, um, so that when you get to the point where all the lines of business have workloads, it's a lot easier to, to figure out who's using what. So we have some use cases. Again, you know, we're gonna get into the nuts and bolts of a lot of these topics throughout the session today. But we just wanted to start out with some use cases around these various topics. So when we talk about tagging, we want to understand what is this workload supporting? Can we upgrade this database without breaking something, right? So what I've seen with some of my other customers when it's come time to you know, look at their OCI estate, they may look at, okay, there's, and I'm just going to use some, some, num some round numbers here, but maybe there's 100 databases running and if you know 10% of those are on older versions and need to be upgraded, it's really crucial to understand what application is being supported by each of those databases so that when you know the business decides, hey, we need everything up to you know updated to 19C, it's crucial to understand what is that actually supporting, who's in charge of it, um, and when can we do this upgrade without causing some sort of uh, outage to that application. Budgets and quotas, again, some, some pieces here to consider, you know, what tools are available to control costs within OCI? How can I avoid overages? I think that's a huge issue for a lot of customers. Nobody wants unplanned invoices. Um, and how can I control spend by line of business and project? So, you know, one of my customers, it's, it's crucial for them that they avoid overages. Their finance department uh, cannot stand getting those unexpected overage invoices, so they leverage the budgets uh, within OCI so that they can see if they're getting close to consuming their commitment, they can proactively place an expansion order and avoid an un you know an unplanned invoice. Um, for their business, it's crucial that they can you know get those things approved ahead of time and not get those uh, you know overage invoices. Uh, unexpectedly. And then the last piece, and again, we're going to get into all these tools throughout the session. Last thing I just wanted to touch on was Cloud Advisor. You know, where are my opportunities to optimize consumption? Are all my workloads fully secure? Um, you know, it's for a lot of my customers that I work with, Cloud Advisor becomes kind of a, a starting point where they go to regularly just to make sure that there's no low hanging fruit that they should look at to, to optimize or, or secure better. Um, and I think that becomes really important for, for most customers to make sure that they're looking at that tool, uh, at least in some sort of regular cadence schedule. So Olivia, I'll, I'll turn it back to you. All right, thank you, George. And we'll be covering these tools um, throughout this quick start. But to get us started, I first want to cover compartments because this is very foundational to getting started in OCI. So when you first get started in OCI, you're first going to have your root tenancy right here. But as you go, you're going to want to organize your different resources. And this is what the main goal of a compartment is. It's going to help you with that. 
And also if you're creating any resource in OCI, be it a database, a compute instance, you have to specify in which compartment it will reside in. So good to have that kind of mapped out. And so you can see right here, um, we have a mock company vision corp and we've broken it down with different sub compartments. So maybe you can have a compartment for marketing, finance, um, from there you can have different sub compartments. So maybe you have an infrastructure compartment where you'll put all your networking, um, enterprise applications. So maybe put your instances here, enterprise data. So maybe object storage or database or something. So just kind of a logical way of organizing your different resources and you can organize it by resource, project, uh, maybe by environment. So there's many different ways to go about it. But once again, very key, because whenever you create a resource, you have to specify in which compartment it will be created in. And then from here, you can see we've gone ahead and added some resources. So we have our instances and enterprise applications, our networking and infrastructure. So it's kind of broken down this way. And then from there, another key element of this, um, you can see this icon right here. So this is just symbolizing policies. So in OCI, it's gonna be denied by default. So essentially you grant access to a group of users with policies or you know, different permissions for working with your, your resources in your different compartments. So you have these policies in place to grant those permissions. And you can see here we have different um, groups of admin users. So we have an admin infrastructure admin group managing permissions for the infrastructure compartment. And then we have a shared service admin group managing permissions for shared services. And then we just have a general identity and access management or IAM admin group managing um, general permissions. So it's good or best practice to have different um, groups of admins managing access to the different compartments, just so that there's no overlap because infrastructure admins are gonna be more familiar with the permissions for infrastructure. Shared service is gonna be more familiar with the permissions need here. So good to have you know different groups of admins um, for these different compartments or just in general. All right, so that's an overview of compartments. All right, so now that you've created your compartments and organized your resources, you're going to want to be able to track these resources and you can do this um, with tagging. All right, so tagging is gonna enable you to tag your resources with extra data so that you can describe how your different resources like compute or storage are used and what they're used for. So with tags, you can associate individual resources with a project, um, a department or even a customer. And also from a cost perspective, you can use tags for cost tracking purposes and also set budgets based upon cost tracking tags. So you'll see that a little bit later on when UMA covers budgets. And you can also use a tag to track costs for a project that span compartments and for a job-based chargeback. So diving a little bit deeper into tags and some um, things to keep in mind. So once again, tags are gonna be metadata attached to resources. So they're used to add contextual information about a resource. So a resource like your load balancer or instances can have many tags. And so you have two different types of tags. So you have um, a defined tag and a free form tag. So defined tags are where tag admins can manage that resource metadata. And then you have freeform tags. So this is unmanaged metadata applied to resources by users. So you're going to want to likely use defined tags because you can have more features like bulk edit or cost tracking with defined tags that you won't get with those freeform tags. So that's just kind of something to, to keep in mind. Another component of tagging, one of the first few things you'll probably create um, when you get started with tagging is tag namespace right here. And this allows you to group defined tags for access control. So you can think of the tag namespace as a container for a set of tag keys. And the best practice is to create at least two tag namespaces. So one for everyone, and then maybe one um, restricted for cost tracking. All right, so going in to um, policies, so going back to earlier, um, in OCI, it's gonna be denied by default with anything. So access is not granted unless stated. So an admin in your organization needs to set up groups, compartments and policies that control 
which group of users can access which services, which resources, and the type of access. And it's the same is going to be with tagging. So you will need required permissions for working with tags. And one thing that you can do with tags and policies is have a tag admin creating and managing all the tags that users apply to resources. So you can use an IAM policy to select tag admins who can go ahead and create tags and then grant all other in the tenancy only the ability to apply those tags. And the benefit to this approach is that you can create and manage the keys and values used to tag those resources. And then right here, you can see some example policies. So you're allowing a group of users, so budget group and a certain permission. So inspect, read or full permission with manage and tag namespace. So just some examples right here. And you can get more granular. So, um, so once again, allowing a group of users to use a tag namespace where maybe the namespace is development or something like that. So you can definitely get a little bit more specific with your policies. All right, so going into automating tag applications. So you can do this with a tag default. And so usually you would do this at the same time as creating your compartment. So when you see create your compartment, you should see an option to create a tag default. So if you want to automate the process of um, tagging your resources, you can do it with a tag default. So it's best practice to, um, to create those both at the same time. So um, also because if you create anything in that compartment before you set up the tag default, those resources won't be retroactively tagged. So just something um, to kind of keep in mind there. So that is automating tag application. I had a question actually, um, just to kind of add a bit more context when we're talking about, you know, automating tag applications. So, um, you know, what if somebody goes, starts working in OCI, they haven't actually um, set up a tagging schema yet, but they created a ton of resources. Is there a way to use tag defaults to kind of retroactively tag or automate that aspect? So if you did, let's say you created some resources and then you create that tag default. So yes, those previous resources won't be retroactively tagged, but if you wanted to um, add some automation for maybe um, tagging that, you can use a script or also in the console, there's a section in Tensee Explorer. And then you can see all the different resources in your different compartments. So you can pick and choose different resources, see the tags already associated with them. So you, you could add tags to those resources that weren't retroactively tagged, or you can also go ahead and just in general, manage the tags there so you can remove a tag, add a tag, so you can do it that way as well. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So even if you know you you, you set up that tag um, default later on, there's certainly options for automating the process of tagging those previous resources, either through the console or through a script. All right, so just kind of recapping once again, you first start off with your root compartment, but from there, you're going to want to maybe create different sub compartments for organizing your resources. And there's many different ways of doing that. So here we kind of just did it by um, resource. You can do it by project, by team, by environment. And then from there, you have different policies that you could leverage to grant permissions to your different groups of users for working with these different resources. So just kind of a high level overview right here. And then you can use tagging to keep track of your, your different resources. All right, and just kind of comparing um, compartments and tags. So one way to look at compartments and tags is like a filing cabinet. So a filing ca cabinet contains all your files, like a compartment contains your different resources. And you can have different filing cabinets, like you can have different compartments for different teams like operations or developers. And then within filing cabinets, you have folders to track and organize your files, much like tags track your resources in OCI. But overall, compartments are more for setting permission boundaries and organizing your resources, while tags are more um, for things like tracking cost. Right.
And then lastly, just some best practices to keep in mind. So you want to use defined tags. So you have the option to do defined tags or freeform tags, but with defined tags, you get more features like cost tracking and bulk edits. Um, also, you want to create tag definitions for everything you want to search. So generally ask yourself, you know, what you need to search on and use that as a tag. Um, you also want to secure your tag namespaces. So maybe create at least two tag namespaces. So one for everyone and one maybe restricted for cross tracking. And then if you want automation, you want to um, use tag defaults to automatically tag all resources in your compartment. But once again, you know, you can use Tenancy Explorer in the console to manage your tags or maybe use a script. And then also you want to put all your tag namespaces at the top of the tree you expect to use it in. So eventually, um, you know, you may restrict tag usage to the compartment tree they live in. Um, so it's okay to put these in the root, but recommend to be placed at the top compartment where they'll be used. All right, and with that, I'll uh, pass it over to Uma to take us through the second portion of today's presentation. Thanks, Olivia. So the first part is mainly just, you know, organizing your resources with compartments and tracking them with tagging. So now we're going to go a bit more into cost and budget. Yes, exactly. Um, so there were some questions that I got in the Q&A. So um, just to kind of reiterate them, we had a question on setting a budget, um, which I'll be going through how you can set a budget of, let's say, 85% of your monthly OCI subscription for your whole tenancy. There was another question on compartments on if you can have a single resource belong to multiple compartments. Um, so right now you can only have a resource belong to one compartment because again, the main kind of purpose of compartments is not only resource allocation, but like access and permission boundaries. Um, so, you know, if you did want to allocate your resource to kind of um, different areas like an infrastructure or also database kind of grouping, that's where tagging would really come in handy as well. So it's kind of good to utilize both in that sense. Um, but now for the rest of the session, I'm gonna take you through, I believe three or four different tools that all have to do with cost and budget analysis, as well as how to optimize your spend in OCI. Um, and we'll be referencing tagging and compartments a lot with these tools. So that's why it's important to really get a good foundational understanding of them. And also you want to make sure that along with, you know, setting up your users, compartments and tags are one of the first things that um, you start defining in OCI as you build out. So the first tool I'll go through is our OCI budgeting service. So this is a great way to track your actual or forecasted spend. Um, and you can choose different scopes within OCI. So you can set a budget off your entire tenancy. So that's going to be your entire OCI account. So anything that you have created within that tenancy, uh, in any of those compartments, you know, you can track against a budget. You can also do it to a specific compartment. So, um, you know, Olivia showed us one example of a breakdown of compartments. That's not the only way to, you know, utilize compartments. You can also utilize them by project. That's something that's really popular that we see with our customers. And then within each project, maybe you'll have sub compartments that are, um, you know, having the different environment types. So maybe like a non-production and a production compartment, um, but overall you have that umbrella compartment of you know a specific you know project. Like let's say you're automating a SaaS application or uh, integrating it with some um, you know OCI tools. Uh, that just is an example use case. So if you wanted to track a budget against that entire like um, automation project for that application, then it would be a good idea to track um, a budget against that particular compartment. Um, you can also set a budget scope on a cost tracking tag. So if you have multiple instances um, that are maybe scattered throughout different compartments, but you, they're all being attributed to, let's say, the same cost center, then it's a really good idea to tag them with a cost tracking tag of the same type, and then you can create a budget against that. So once you've set your actual budget scope and then your allotted budget amount, then you're able to set up these optional alerts in which you're choosing just predefined threshold to be notified via email. So right now, um, you know, at its most basic form, the budget service only notifies you via email, uh, but you can actually um, extend that out if you choose to utilize our notification service as well. So with that service, it's going to give you um, guaranteed delivery 
um, of your messages to um, different channels or subscriptions. So that could be SMS, that could be um, you know, a specific HTTP URL, um, it could be PagerDuty or Slack. Um, so there's different ways to get notified via like a third-party application through our notification service. And something also to know about the OCI budgeting service is it is a soft limit. So it's just going to alert you when you're, you know, reaching that threshold or amount, but it's not going to take any action to, you know, uh, lock down a specific environment or shut down an instance. Um, that would be more of an enforced budget, which you can choose to, again, enable, but you'd have to work with a few other of our observability and management tools like the event service and the function service. All right, so the next kind of tool that I want to go through, which is um, you can find it right next to budgets in the OCI console, is called cost analysis. So this is a really good way to look at your entire spend of your overall tenancy and account, and you can kind of query the data and filter the information based off of what you want to see. Um, so you can add specific filters to the data. So if you're only interested in particular regions, maybe just one compartment that you want to look at. You can also change the time period that you're looking at. So you can look at it on a daily basis, like how much you're spending every day for the past month, or you can make it a monthly basis. So in the past year, how much am I spending month to month um, and kind of see if, you know, the cost has risen or decreased, like kind of track that and analyze that. You can also add dimensions. So dimensions are going to group together the data that you'll see reflected on the visualization that this report shows you. Um, so this is like grouping together specific aspects. So if I want to look at, um, you know, how much I, am I spending in every single compartment over the past month, I could add a dimension on compartments. Same thing, you can do it with your region, availability domain, pretty much anything you can filter on, you can also add a dimension on. Uh, but with a dimension, because it's going to show you, you know, all of those aspects, so like all the compartments, all the regions, all the availability domains, uh, you can only have one dimension at a time. Whereas with filters, you can actually have multiple filters because it's just going to uh, filter the data that is shown. And then tagging is also a really important aspect of it. That's why we go through tags in the beginning. We want you guys to be aware and really understand the value of using tags in OCI. You can also query this data based off of tags. So you can add filters if you just want to look at specific tags, or you can add a dimension for a, for a tag. So if you want to look at a particular tag key and all the different values and how much you're spending in each particular um, tag key and value, you can do that as well. And that's another way to track and analyze your costs depending on how you're defining your keys and values. And for those tags, does um, cost tracking have to be enabled for that? Yeah, so for this um, particular um, service, no, you can filter and add a dimension on any sort of tag, even a free form tag, I believe it doesn't have to be um, cost tracking enabled. But for the budget service, if you do want to set a budget on a tag, it does have to be cost tracking enabled. So there is a distinction there. Thanks for bringing that up. All right. So moving right along, um, I want to talk a little bit about quotas. So I mentioned how budgets, that's going to be more of a soft budget uh, or a soft limit. Uh, quotas is actually going to be a bit more of a hard limit, but rather than focusing on a dollar amount or dollar value, um, you're actually limiting a certain number of resources that you can create in um, your different compartments. So they're pretty similar to service limits. Service limits are set by Oracle. Um, you know, for our resource allocation in OCI, there's going to be a specific number of resources that you can create of different types. Um, and, you know, if you find yourself um, scaling and hitting that limit, you can always go into the console and submit a request to increase your service limit. Those usually get approved within a day. And then once they're approved, you know, you can continue provisioning more resources. Uh, but it is going to be controlled by Oracle. So that's not something that you can change yourself, those limits. You have to request that. With a quota, it kind of works the same way, except this time you guys are able to control the limit. So basically, you're just setting limits on particular resources, either for your entire tenancy, or you can also do it for a particular compartment. Um, so this can really help it from a cost management perspective is 
Maybe you don't want to have um, big systems being created in your non-production compartments, um, or you just want to, if there's a very expensive type of, um, you know, like an E2 VM, maybe you just want to only limit it to three or four for like your lower budget compartments so that um, your users aren't just creating as much as they want all the time, because that's really going to rack up your costs. So with quota policies, you know, they're really mainly for compartments. Um, and in this case, you're able to control resource allocation for your different compartments and projects that way. And you can always um, customize them as well by using quota policy language. So that is what this um, slide is talking about. We are going through what the quota policy statements look like, and we have some examples here. So it's pretty intuitive to um, kind of learn the, the language. It's, it kind of is similar to your IAM policies that you may already be working with. Um, so a quota policy is going to set, start with one of three verbs. It'll either start with zero, set, or unset. Zero is going to completely remove access um, to a particular uh, resource in that compartment. So you're not able to create it or manage it, really do anything with it. Set is going to set a particular limit um, for a certain type of resource in a compartment in a particular location. And then onset is going to clear that um, limit. So in this example, uh, this first one, it's a policy statement. We are allowing 10 VM standard 2.1 compute instances in a single compartment in a single region. So the policy statement will actually start at the second line where it's saying set compute quota. So since we're looking at a compute instance shape, your VM standard 2.1, um, we want to define it as a compute quota. Obviously, if we were setting it for a load balancer shape or database shape, we would change that to load balancer da database. And then after we have set compute quota, we have our shape. So it's VM standard to one count. Then we'll have our limit, which is 10, and then our location, which will normally be in compartment and then the compartment name. So in this case, we're targeting a compartment named IT. Um, and we've also added a additional where clause just to get a bit more specific. And we've said that we've set it to where the request region is Phoenix. So compartments are going to be global entities because they are logical. So they can actually span multiple regions. You can have, um, you know, resources in Phoenix, in Ashburn, in Chicago, and they might all be under this compartment IT. So we're just getting pretty specific with this quota policy and we're saying, Okay, set a quota for this compartment, but only in the Phoenix region. And so let's say I wanted to drop one of these quota policies. Is there a place in the console to help me with that? Or how do I do yes. Yeah, so that's a really good um, question. Yeah, there is a way to um, look directly at your service limits and actually create a quota policy stub um, from that particular limit. And I'll actually be showing you guys how to do that in the console. Um, so you're able just to copy and paste um, essentially that policy statement based off of a service limit and all you would change is the actual limit amount and then the location as well. Um, and then in this uh, last example we have here, we are showing you how you can clear a quota using an unset statement. So we're just going to unset that compute quota this time for a different resource shape. It's a dense VM. Um, in your entire tenancy. So now any sort of service limits that you have on this compute shape are just gonna be your original service limits that are enforced by Oracle. So again, just as a reminder at the bottom here, we have tenancy control with service limits that's set by Oracle. You can't change that. You can only request an increase. And then you have your compartment control with quota policies that's going to be set by you know, your administrators um, and that can be changed. Any questions so far? I don't think I see any in the in the Q&A, so we can keep going. Um, okay, so now I just want to go through a few different best practices or strategies that we have for the three tools that we talked about. So we talked about cost analysis or cost reporting, we talked about budgeting, and then we talked about quota policies. So some recommendations that we have is number one, organizing your resources into compartments by project and then tagging them by cost center. So like I said, um, you know, there's several different ways that you can organize your resources into compartments. 
One suggestion is just breaking your compartments down by the different projects that you're working on. And then it also isn't a bad idea to have uh, a separate defined uh, tag namespace uh, specifically for cost tracking. And then you can have your different um, cost tracking tag values um, corresponding to maybe your different cost centers. And then that way you're able to you know, tag multiple resources based off of their cost center. And then also once you've done that, then you can utilize the budget service to create different budgets for those compartments and those cost tracking tags. So you're able to um, really be on top of how much you're spending, be, alert, be alerted um, automatically of when you reach a certain limit for that particular project or for that particular cost center. And then the next one is breaking down your cost using cost analysis per cost center on a monthly basis to drive the internal cross charging process. Really what that means is just, you know, utilizing that cost analysis page um, and, you know, querying the data based off of what you're really interested in. Obviously, if you want to look at it per cost center, you can query the data based off of a tag. Um, you can also just do it based off of your compartments if you want to see how much you're spending in each project. Um, if you've set up your compartments where you have like an infrastructure compartment, networking database, you know, that's another way to query the data from, kind of see um, how much money you're spending um, for those different groups of, of services. Um, and it can be monthly basis that you're looking at it. It could be weekly, it could be daily. It's really just like, what is important to you? How much do you have going on in OCI? And how important is it that you kind of stay on top of how much you're spending? Um, there is usually, I believe, like a 24 hour delay or, or a delay that is within less of a day. Um, so you won't see it, you know, when you log on and I'll show you where to access it. Um, you might not get the most recent day amount, but then obviously all the previous historical data will be, um, will be there for you. All right. And then our last suggestion here is using those quota policies to limit the use of your expensive resources in your lower budget projects. Um, so that is pretty self-explanatory, you know, if you have projects that are maybe, or compartments that, uh, in environments that are, you know, focused for testing or dev, maybe you want to have some limits so that, um, you don't have really expensive systems or resources being created in those compartments. And you would do that with a quota policy. All right. So uh, for this last portion, before I go into my tenancy to kind of demo some tools, there's one last tool I want to talk to you about. And this tool really focuses on how you can optimize your spend in OCI and just essentially run your uh, tenancy a bit more efficiently. So this tool is called Oracle Cloud Advisor. It essentially works as a recommendation engine and where it is going to scan um, a lot of your cloud native resources in OCI, see if there's any sort of potential inefficiencies and in how it's run, um, and then offer you kind of guided solutions on how to address that. So there are three main categories in Cloud Advisor. There's cost management, performance, and high availability. Today, we'll be focusing on the cost management portion. And typically with cost management, um, when you have a specific recommendation for cost management, you're also gonna have an estimated monthly savings amount. So if you chose to, you know, take that recommendation, remediate that issue, um, it'll give you an amount that you are estimated to save. Um, you'll also see on this little screenshot, we have a portion for security. So that is taken from Oracle Cloud Guard, which is a different uh, free kind of recommendation tool. Uh, it is, you know, mainly concerning all your security, um, you know, risks or threats or inefficiencies, again, that you may have in your tenancy. And then it will offer you kind of guided solutions as well, or it'll take those corrective actions for you. Um, so you see a little kind of just screenshot from here, but um, if you really want to learn about Cloud Guard, that will be in an upcoming security session um, that we go into. And there's kind of a lot more that you can do with that tool. So I won't go too much into it today. I just wanted to point it out. And so how um, Cloud Advisor is gonna work is it's gonna scan your tenancy every 24 hours. And then after seven days, it's gonna accumulate enough data to give you those recommendations. So what's really cool about Cloud Advisor is it's super customizable. So not only can you look at your recommendations, 
Um, you can see, you know, which resources these recommendations are pointing to. You can choose to implement them just directly or automatically in the console. You can also choose to dismiss or postpone them depending on, again, what's important to you. Maybe those resources are configured that way for a reason. Um, so you don't want to touch them. That's totally fine. You can also create overrides in Cloud Advisor. Um, so let's say you have different workloads that have different performance characteristics. So maybe for one workload, uh, one project, you're getting told a bit too soon to maybe uh, right size a compute instance. But for a different workload, different compartment, you're not getting told soon enough. So you can actually change up the recommendation criteria that Cloud Advisor looks at uh, before it gives you that recommendation. You can edit those things in what's called a recommendation profile where you choose from a conservative, standard, or aggressive approach. Um, and then you can point it at your different workloads by using tags and compartments. So it's very cool that way. All right. So I think that it means it's time for me to go into my console and show you guys these resources that we talked about. So I'm pretty much just gonna go through um, all the resources that I talked about concerning, oops, I logged into this a while ago. So that's gonna make me re-log in. Um, so yeah, we'll be going through budgets. I'll also show you guys cost analysis, uh, quota policies and your service limits. And then we'll take a look at Cloud Advisor as well. So I'm into the console. Hopefully you guys can see it. Um, I'll first show you where you can look at your budgets. So that's going to be under billing and cost management. Under cost management, you see we have a budgets page and we also have our cost analysis page. So first I'm going to take you through budgets and how to create those. So first you'll see here, you can actually filter by budget scope. So if you have one for a compartment, for a specific cost tracking tag, or maybe even a child tenancy that you've linked to your parent tenancy. Um, you can kind of filter by that. Right here on this particular tenancy, we only have two budgets. We have one for a cost tracking tag and then one for a compartment. Um, so I will kind of take you guys through how to create that. So I'm actually gonna show you how to create one based off of a compartment since that had to do with one of the questions um, we got earlier. So if let's say the quest, this question was asking, you know, I want to set a budget for 85% of my OCI subscription each month because I don't want to go into overages. So that's a really good idea. Something that you could do is choose compartment. You would obviously give it a name and a description. And then in your target compartment, you would choose your root. Um, so your root compartment is going to be your... Um, like most parent compartment, if that makes sense. It's essentially your entire tenancy because all of your compartments are gonna be built from the root compartment. And then obviously you can have sub compartments within those compartments, but your root is like your base layer. Um, it's your first compartment for your overall tenancy. You'll see I'm getting a little error here because I already have a budget for this. So it's asking me to choose a different one, but I just wanted to kind of show you guys how it works. Um, and then I can, in my schedule, I can choose a monthly recurring amount or a custom non-recurring amount. So if I just wanted to look at it for a week or something, I could choose this option. Uh, but again, going along with that um, gentleman's question of setting a budget for 85% of your subscription. So I would just put in your allotted monthly subscription amount. Um, so let's say it was like 10,000 or something. And then I would also put in the day of the month to begin budget processing. So depending on when your billing cycle ends, you may want to start this like a day or two after. And then you can choose your uh, budget alert rule. So you can either choose if you want to be notified when you actually spend an amount or when you're forecasted to spend. And then you can choose a percentage of the budget or absolute amount. So in this example, I would just put 85%. Uh, when I am actually spending 85% of my monthly subscription amount, like I want to get notified. And then I'd be able to put in, you know, my email address here. And then the message can let me know, like you have spent 85% of monthly subscription, something like that to get notified on. So, and then you'd be able to create this budget. So 
I'll take you into one that we've already created. Um, for this example, we had a monthly budget amount of $5,000. In this case, I was actually targeting a um, cost tracking tag. So instead of choosing compartment, I would just choose cost tracking tag and scope. And then it would um, make me choose my namespace, my tag key, and my tag value, which are these um, kind of three areas here. Um, and then I would be able to set my budget alert rules once again. So we have, you know, um, an 80% rule. So when we actually sp spend 80% of $5,000, we're going to let all our admins know that we've hit 80%. Um, another kind of suggestion to do is when you are going to spend, you're forecasted to spend 100% of your budget to also be notified as well. So that is how budget works. Um, just, you know, if you're not using any of the bells and whistle, whistles, like notifications and O&M, that's just how the service works on here. And then I'll also show you cost analysis as well. Um, so keep in mind for what you'll see on my screen, everything is going to be zero because I'm working on an internal tendency. So all of our costs are automatically um, evaluated at zero. So I won't be able to see really any data here. But if you choose to use this on your tenancy, you'll obviously see numbers show up. Um, but I still want to kind of show you how this tool works. So again, this is where you can look at all your spending for your entire tenancy and kind of filter information based off of what you want to see. Um, so when you go into this tool, you have some system reports, again, that you can kind of start from, uh, usually is showing you cost by service. And then this is where you can change up your um, time period you want to look at. So typically, it's going to show you the first of the month to the current day. Uh, but again, you can go back like a few months um, to see um, how your uh, cost has changed maybe for this whole calendar year so far of 2024. You can change it to a monthly um, range or monthly granularity rather than every single day. Maybe I just want to see how much I spent in January and how much I spent in February. And then I can opt to show either my dollar amount, cost, or my usage. You can also choose to show forecast. And then this is where you'd be able to add your different filters. So again, if I was like really only concerned about maybe all my regions in North America, I could choose all of these, um, set a region filter to that. I could add another filter again, based off of a service, uh, depending on what my tag key and value was. And then I can add my grouping dimension. So again, I can group it by service. This is just gonna show me how much I'm spending every single day in every service in OCI. I could also do it by compartment. So maybe I want to see how much I'm spending in every single compartment. Um, and then I can do it, you know, by region, even SKU number and tag as well. So I'll just show you kind of what um, this looks like. So if I went back to service here, this is what the graph looks like. So you have your dates here. So right now it's only showing five data points since it's the beginning of the month. Um, and you'll see my cost per day. You'll also see on the legend all the different services that this tenancy is currently utilizing. Um, and then again, if this wasn't an internal tenancy, you'd see an actual stacked bar graph. So each kind of chunk in the bar graph is going to represent um, a different service, and you'll see how much you spent in that service every single day. And that's essentially um, the visualization that this, this tool shows you. So again, it's really good to kind of visually see what's going on um, regularly and consistently in your OCI tenancy. You can also see this data in a table format as well. So it gives you that option too. All right, um, I'm gonna go down to governance and administration. We'll go under tenancy management and I will show you guys quota policies, but I first wanna show you guys service limits. Um, so service limits are gonna be under this page called limits, quotas and usage. So essentially you'll have different limits based off of the different services. I really suggest that you, you know, you can find this in our documentation, but you can also take a look at, um, you know, the limits yourself uh, based off of the service and scope. Um, but essentially you'll have different limits for different services. You'll see what the limit kind of is, what it would be used as in a quota policy, as well as, um, you know, the actual numeric amount of the limit how much you're using, and then how much is available. So if I wanted to create a quota policy from this limit, 
I could click create quota policy stub. And then this is where it's going to give me the actual language I need. Of course, I can just put in my own limit amount. Um, sorry, I need to copy this first. And then I'd be able to paste it into quota policies and kind of change it. So let me go to quota policies. It's very simple to create a quota policy. You really are just giving it a name and description and then tape, typing in your statements. So I can go ahead and edit this. Um, and then obviously I would wanna put a uh, name of my compartment here to set that quota policy. So we have some example quota policies here. This one is for a load balancing shape. We're limiting it to 200 in a child compartment. So you'll see now we are setting a load balancer quota. This is the shape we're looking at, the limit we want, and then our location is a child compartment. And since quotas are saved at the tenancy level, you always have to denote the path. So because this is a child compartment, I'm gonna put its parent compartment first and then a colon and then the child compartment that I'm uh, thinking of. If I just put the child compartment name, it's not gonna recognize it. All right, and then lastly, I do want to show you guys Cloud Advisor. Um, so that's going to be, again, under governance and administration. It has its own tool right here, or its own little page right here. Um, so essentially, when you go in at a glance for the overview page, you'll see information based off of the different categories, like cost management, high availability, performance, and security again. This is taken directly from CloudGuard. Um, you can see the types of recommendations, like how many recommendations fall under each category, what they are classified as, and if they have been implemented or not. And they also give you some descriptions at the bottom of like the types of uh, recommendations you can expect to see within each category. And again, for cost management, because everything is for cost shows up at zero, it's not able to calculate any estimated savings for me. Um, but that's just because of this particular tendency. So in categories, you can see the different, or sorry, in recommendations, you can see the different recommendations we have and kind of how many resources they're targeting. You can also filter by um, category. You can filter by service or status of the recommendation. Um, so for this specific, um, you know, recommendation just to enable auto-tuning for these detached block volumes, You'll see all these different block volumes, which compartment they're in, which region they're in. Um, and I can choose again to implement all of these directly or postpone, dismiss them. If I clicked on the resource name, it will also open up a new tab and take me to that home page where I could go ahead and um, implement that auto tuning policy. So that's recommendations. Let's see. You can also look at the history. Um, so this is going to show you for the past seven days, um, like I mentioned, every seven days, it's going to refresh. Um, so you're able to kind of see the resources once again, um, the type of resources, recommendation, compartment, and then the status. And you can filter again by status, by resource type, and by the actual recommendation. Um, last thing that I want to show is an override. I know we're coming up on time, so um, hopefully you guys can bear with me or, or watch the recording if you can't catch this last part. Um, but this is a really cool feature of Cloud Advisor, so I just want to make sure I cover it. Um, this is where you can change your recommendation profile for specific workloads. So right here are the global recommendations. So for these particular recommendations, this is typically what it's going to look at. So if we look at this example of downsizing an underutilized compute instance, it's gonna look at your average CPU utilization and max memory utilization. Uh, over a period of seven days, if those are both less than 10%, it's going to give you a recommendation for that instance to downsize it. Um, so let's say I, you know, for certain compute instances, I you know, don't want to be recommended at that point, I can create an override here. So with that override, I of course give it a name and I choose the recommendation I wanna create the override for. And this is where I can change the actual criteria or we call it recommendation profile. So let's say I actually want it to be a period of 14 days. I can choose if I wanted to look at the average utilization or 95th percentile. And then this is my approach. So I can choose a more conservative approach or maybe a more aggressive approach. So maybe I wanna be um, 
asked to downsize if after two weeks, the average utilization is just 15%. Um, and then I'd be able to aim this override at my certain um, compartments and um, tags as well. So those certain um, hosts, right? So I would just, you know, put in a particular compartment maybe um, that I want to have this override for, or I could choose a tag in that case. So that's kind of what we've done in this example. Um, Example override, we chose the same recommendation. We chose an aggressive approach. We kept the valuation period at seven days. And then we um, also kept the compartment, just the division corp compartment. And you'll see the OSID here. So that is how we can use Cloud Advisor. I'm and yeah, thank you guys so much for attending. Thank you, Olivia and Uma, for such a great session and for explaining everything in such a simple manner. Really enjoyed the session. I hope everyone enjoyed it too and learned something new today. We look forward to see you again on March 19th for another exciting session on Oracle Cloud Networking. We'll talk about core OCI networking services and design concepts. So if you're interested, please do not forget to register for the session. I recommend that you bookmark the Devon and Beyond page and check frequently for new sessions on trending topics. With that, uh, thanks again for joining us. See you all next time. Have a great day, everyone.